quadratic equation like uh, quadratic formula and uh, the re relationship of their roots with uh, coefficients to solve more challenge problems. Now let's see the first one. Uh, see this problem 10.26. Find all x such that this one equals 13. Everybody, can you try solve this problem? Think how you can do this problem. This one looks uh, hard, right? So, but first. Is it four? Is it four? Uh, you mean the answer? Yeah, is it four? Yeah, how you got that? Yeah, your answer is correct, actually. You basically multiply both sides by x plus 1 and then by x minus 3, so it's going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals x minus 3 times x plus 1, and then it's going to be x squared plus 5x minus 24 equals x minus 3 times x plus 8, and then... You could cancel out, and then it's basically gonna be like. Uh, um, if you both side times x plus one times uh, x minus three, if you do that way, it's not uh, a good way. You know, let me show you. If you do this way, if you do both side times. X plus you could you could also factor them so you get x squared plus five x minus twenty four equals x minus three times x plus eight. Right, that's correct way. If you say if you both side times this uh, common denominator, say this one will cancel with this. Then, but this x minus 3 will left. This one need times this term. We'll make this term will go to the highest power will go to 3. Right? This one, x minus 3 will cancel out, but you have x plus 1 left. x plus 1 times this one also makes the highest uh, term will go to x power 3. That one will be really hard. And uh, the correct way you need to do this way. So first factoring this. Factoring this we can get x minus 3 times x plus 1. And then you could factor, you could get out x plus 1 and then you could get out x minus 3. Right. Then this one you can factor as x plus 8 then times x minus 3 then over x minus 3 then this one equals 13 say this one x cannot equals so here the problem is is x can equals negative 1 say x cannot no. X cannot. So it's four. So it's four. Right? X cannot equals negative one. X also cannot equals three. Cannot equals three. Otherwise, say the denominator of this fraction will be equal zero. That's meaningless. So by this way, x plus one comes out. Then x minus three comes out. So then we got x minus three plus x minus 8, uh, plus 8, then got this one equals 13. Then simplify this, got 2x plus 5 equals 13. Then that means 2x equals 8, so x equals 4. Okay, the correct answer is 4. Say, 
this is the correct way. Otherwise, you know, it's hard. If you do、uh, both, I, both sides, I, says,、yeah. I didn't say that. I did、um, divide it by x plus one and and then that. Mm. I I I did the factoring way, but I just said that you could do it like that. Right, right. But it's hard. Yeah, then you cancel out this. This is also very important. You need to know x actually cannot equals negative one. X also cannot equals three. Then you cancel out these、uh, common factors. Then simplify this equation to a linear equation. Then you solve that. You got x equals.、Uh, Four, so this is the first、uh, first problem. Now let's go to next example. This one it's ten point twenty seven. This one actually from、uh, American High School Computation. It's AMC ten. This is a very famous、uh, American math computation、uh, test. So now let's see. In this problem, we found the value of k, for which the equation x minus one over x minus two equals x minus k over x minus six has no solution for x. Okay, we try to solve this equation, but try to find the, what is k. Make this equation has no solution. Okay, it's not ask you find k make this equation has solution. They ask you do the op opposite, find the k value make this equation has no solution. So then this is the steps. This four that's the steps to do that. Now let's see one by one. First, what two values of x cannot be solutions? To this equation, no matter what k is. Everybody, can you send me a private chat? Tell me this. What is、uh, okay? So Andy,、uh, you. Everybody, you just、uh, send me a private chat. Don't talk, okay? Otherwise,、uh, the other students feel not comfortable, okay? Now let's see this one. Everybody, send me this. What two values of x cannot be? Uh, cannot be、uh, okay. Everybody send me the okay. Very good. Lucy is correct. Who else? Andy, you get the one is correct, but we also see ask you two values, two values of x. Okay, correct, and Andy got it correct now. Okay, very good, very good. Yes, this one is x equals two and six. If when x equals two, or x equals six, say the denominator of these two fraction will equal zero. When x equals two, the denominator of this fraction equals zero. When x equals six, the denominator of this fraction equals zero. So then, these two fractions equal denominator equals zero. That's meaningless. Then now let's say b. Get rid of the fractions by multiplying both sides by the appropriate binomial, solving the resulting equation for x. So then they ask you times the common denominator. That's x minus two 
times x minus 6 to the both side of this equation. Then solve the resulting equation. Now let's do this. So if both sides times this, then for the left side, x minus 2 will cancel out with this. We get the left side that will be x minus 6 times x minus 1. The right side will be x minus k times x minus 2 because x minus 6 will get cancelled out. Then to solve this equation, you can just expand it both sides. Again, x squared minus 7x plus 6. This is the left side. The right side will be x squared minus k plus 2x then plus 2 times k. So then say x squared comes out with x squared. Then we can do this one, both side, of, both side plus k plus 2, get k plus 2, then minus 7, this one parenthesis x, then both side minus 6, get a 2k minus 6. So then we merge this one, got a k minus 5, Princess times x equals 2k minus 6. So then both sides divided by k minus 5, got x equals 2k minus 6 over k minus 5. Right? If x is not equals 2 or 6, then we can both side times x minus 2 and x minus 6. Then we solve this equation, we can get x equals 2k minus 6 over k minus 5. Now, we finish this b, right? We solve this x get this. Then c, for what values of k? Is there no solution to your equation in b? So then they ask you, what is the k value can make this x is meaningless? Okay, very good. No, so you got it correct. Who else? So for this x expression, what is the value of k can make x is meaningless? Yes, Andy, you're right. So this one, that's k equals 5. When k equals 5, the denominator of expression of x equals 0. So x will be meaningless. So that's the reason k equals 5 will make the, this equation has no solution. Then now let's go to D. Does part A also produce a value of k? for which there's no solution to the original equation? Hint, your equation in B might be helpful for this part too. Okay, then now let's see. See, for this one we got k equals 5. Then maybe k also equals other value makes this equation has no solution. The you can say what value of k can make. Yeah, looks like Andy also got it correct. Say from here when k equals six. Then you can check what value, what k can make this one like x equals 2 or x equals 6, then solve k. So when this one equals 2, so we can get this one equals 2k minus 6 equals 2k minus 10. So 2k cancels out. This one definitely it's, uh, it's not possible. So that means x cannot equals 2. 
This one, we don't worry about this. Then now let's check 2k minus 6 over k minus 5 equals 6. So then we got a 2k minus 6 equals 6k minus 30, right? So then both side plus uh, minus 2k got a 4k. Then both side plus 30 got a 24. So k equals 6. So that means when k equals 6, x equals 6. See? When k equals 6, 2 times 6, that's 12. 12 minus 6, you got a 6. Then divided by 6 minus 5, that's 1. 6 divided by 1, that's 6. So x equals 6. So then that means we have two value of k. That's 5 and 6. Make this equation has no solutions, right? So when you solve this problem first, you need to check what is the value of x makes this equation meaningless. That means you need to check what is the value of x makes the fraction, denominator of fraction is zero. Then you got x equals two and x equals six. Then you now suppose x not equals these two numbers, then you can solve this equation by both sides times x minus 2 and x minus 6. Then you get the x expression. Then this x expression is a fraction of k. Then you can check what is the k value makes this x is meaningless. That's you got k equals 5. Then, but here, the tricky part is this problem you have not finished yet. You need to check maybe the other k value also make this uh, equation has no solution. What is that cut of k? That means you can set that x expression equals 2 or 6, then solve what is k. Then say when we set this one equals 2, we got this equation of k is, has no solution. So that means we don't need to worry about that. Then we set this expression equals 6. When solve this equation, we get k equals 6. So that means when k equals 6, x will equal 6. You know, x equals 6, this equation has no solution. So that means k equals 6 is also a solution we are looking for. So then finally we got two solutions. That's 5 and 6. So this is a problem for 10.27. Now let's go to next one. See so this one is 10.28. They ask you find the uh, all possible value of d over a, where a square minus 6 a times d plus 8 d square equals 0, and a is not equal 0. Okay, how to do this? Everybody try to do it on your scratch paper, then send me private chat. Found all possible value of d over a, where a squared minus 6a times d plus 8d squared equals 0. So first, you can try to factor in this uh, quadratic equation, right? So this one, you know, we can try 1, 1, uh, negative 2 and the negative 4. So then you can say negative 2 minus 4, negative 2 minus 4, you got this one equals negative 6. Right? So that means this factoring is uh, correct. So we can write this one as a minus 2 times d, then times a minus 4 times d, this one will equal 0. Right? So then, you know, products of this 
uh, binomial equals zero, that means a minus two d equals zero. This is a one. Uh, this one maybe equals zero, right? Another one is two minus four d equals zero. So then we can solve this one got the a equals two times d. This one got the a equals four times d. So then they ask d over a. So got the d over a will equals one over two. Another is d over a equals one over four, right? Say so then this possible value for d over a. That's one half and one fourth, right? So this is a uh, one way. Another way you can you can just try like this. Suppose you don't know how to factor. You can write uh, a plus k1 d then times a plus k2 d this one equals this so you expand this one you got a square plus a k1 plus k2 parentheses times d then plus k1 k2 d square. So compare this one with this. You can get k1 plus k2. Uh, this one actually is a times d. Okay. And uh, so this one equals negative six, and the k1 times k2 equals eight. Then solve this equation, you can say from the first one, you can get uh, k2 equals, uh, equals negative 6 minus k1. So then you can probe to here, you get a k1 times a negative 6 minus k1 equals 8. Then we could get a k1 square plus 6 times k1 uh, plus 8 equals 0. Right? Say so you expand this one, got a negative 6 times k1, then minus k1 square, then we both side plus 6k1 plus k1 square, we got this. Then you can factor in this one, got a k1 plus 2 times k1 plus 4, then this one equals 0. This one is equals 0, you got a k1 equals negative 2, and uh, k1 also equals negative 4. So then you can probe to here, that means, say, a minus 2 times d times a minus 4 times d equals 0. So then, next thing, you actually go here. By this way, you found the factor of this. So here, you know, we do this cross multiplication, we get found this uh, factor. If you don't know this, you can actually do this by solving the another quadratic equation found the this factory. Then later you continue go here. Uh, you get a, a minus two d equals zero, and a minus four d equals zero. Then you get a equals two d. So both are divided by a. You get a d over a equals one over two. This one d over a equals one four. Okay, so then by by do this, we solved this problem. Now let's go ten point twenty nine.
This problem, say we write the expression 6r squared minus 7rs plus 2s squared plus 23r minus 13s plus 21 in form of this a r plus b s plus c princess times d r plus e s plus f princess for some constants a b c d e f okay say the object of this problem we try to write this expression as the product of these two expressions so how to do that we just can expand this with this uh, six unknowns, right? Then we compare the expanded expression of with this six unknowns with our original equation. Then we will get uh, six equations. We have six unknowns then six equations then we have one unique solution then we can solve that we can get the a b c d e f but actually when you try to solve this equation you don't uh, need uh, do that exactly because the, you have some shortcut when you compare these uh, coefficients then you can find some uh, coefficients immediately next say look at the terms in the expression that has no s from what terms in our original product do these terms without s come use observations to find a c d f then you can write this expression in the form of this now let's do it say if we have this if you expand this one what you can get you can do you can get a times d this is r square right then now let's say second term r times s say r times this the second term times this first term will have r times s right so then this one we have b times d then also r times s you know this first term times this second term you will have r times s so the coefficient will be a times e then this is r times s term you have these two terms merged together then now let's say s squared s square we only have uh, b times e as s square right then now r r c times d will give you r right so c times d this is one term now c times d another say when f times a r also give you r so we also need a times f this one has r then now let's see s s that will be this term bs times f so we have b times f this one have s then another will c times e also has s so c times e this also has s then the last one that's c times f c times f this is a constant right now let's compare this one with this with this we can get say a times d should uh, equals 6 then uh, cd cd plus af that's the r term this one should equals 23 right 
their CF, this one should equal 21. See, look at, look at the terms in the expression that has no S. If, see, this one has no S, this one has no S, and this one has no S. So we got these three equations, right? Now, let's see, from what terms in our original product do these terms without S term? So that means when you set B, if you set B equals 0 and E equals 0, then you, you will not have the S terms, right? So that means when you set B equals 0, or e equals zero, then you get this, right? So now let's see how many variables we have. One a, c, d, f. Actually, we have uh, four uh, variables. Now let's see. Let's see. A times d equals six. A times d equals six. We can try like uh, let's try this. A equals one and uh, d equals 6, because all these numbers should be integers, right? Now let's say uh, if a equals 1, uh, d equals 6, then now let's say uh, c need times d, and a will times f, so a, suppose a equals 1, d equals, d equals this 6. Okay, now let's let's do this. Okay. If a equals one, d equals six, then now let's say f f equals seven and c equals three. Let's try this. Then say if uh uh a uh, c need times d so that means we need to write this one to the top. We need to write this one because c need times d. So c equals 3, d equals 7. So then say c times d, that's 18. 18 plus 1 times d, a times d, that's uh, 7. So that means this one is not right. 18 plus 7, that will be 20, 25. That's not a work. Then let's try. This is a little bit too big, right? Now let's change this one to 2 and 3. How about this? This one will be 9. 9 plus... Uh, 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 let's see. Mm, Twenty-three. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see. A. Everybody try this. Now let's see what this should be. If you do this, uh, we can get. Yeah, this one looks still, that's 2, yeah, should be 2, 3. Then uh, uh, another will be 3 and 7, this one will be 9, yeah. 9 plus 14, this now is correct, I got it. See, so sometimes you need to try, see, so we already try 1 and 6, not work. 1 and 6, not work. We need to try... 2 and 3. A equals 2, D equals 3. So then D equals 3, A equals 2. So 3 times 3, that's 9. Right? 3 times 3, that's 9. Then 9 plus 2 times 7, that's 14. Then we add together, we got 23. Right? So this one is right. 
So that means we get a equals 2, d equals 3, and uh, f equals f equals 3. Uh, a equals 2, d equals 3. Uh, wait, wait, wait. f equals 7, and c equals 3 f equals 7 and uh, c equals 3. By this way, c times d, that's 9. And a times f, that's uh, 14. B is, b is negative 1 and e is negative 2. Uh, we, we have not worked on that. Now let's first uh, find uh, a, c, d, f. Okay. We got uh, a equals 2, c equals 3, D equals 3 and F equals 7, right? So we got this. Now, you know, after you got this, you know, we can now calculate this. This one will be BD plus AE. This one should equals negative 7. Then uh, B equals 2 and uh, BF plus CE this one equals negative 13 right say we already get A equals now let's simplify this okay these three equations actually we already have no we already know A uh, D, C, A, C, D, and F. So now let's simplify. C, D is 3, right? 3 times B. And uh, A is 2. So 2 times E. This one equals negative 7. Then say B times E equals 2. Then b times f, f that's 7, 7 times b, then plus c times e, c that's uh, 3 times e, this one equals negative 13. Now let's see what is uh, b and e, right? b and e, b can only be, let's try, b equals 1 and uh, e equals 2. This is one way, okay? But definitely this one not work. This one is work for this, but not work for this. Then that means we need to try... You could change them to negative 1 and negative 2. Exactly, yes, yes, that's right. So then we need to try this negative 1 and negative 2. Now let's check. This one, first one, that will be negative 3 uh, minus 4 equals negative 7. Yeah, that's one right. Now let's check uh, third one. So that will be negative 7. So B is negative 1 times 7, negative 7. Then minus 6, they give us less 13, right? So that means this one's right. Okay, so now that means we already solve this problem then get a, a equals three uh, a equals two so two r uh, b equals negative one so minus s c equals three plus three then times d that's uh, three then e that's negative two then uh, f that's 7 so that means we can write this one as this so c write the expression of this in the form of this we got this right so by this way we solved this problem so first the trick the shortcut of this one is uh, not try to solve all these factors. You need to try to solve uh, ACDF, the partial of the this 
this uh, coefficient first. After you got these four factors, then you try to find the other two factors, P and E. Don't try to solve all these six factors at the same time. Because kind of these four factors separate with other two factors. Okay, this is a shortcut when you try to solve this problem. Okay, now let's go to 10.30. So this problem, the number square root of 43 minus 30 times root 2 can be expressed as a plus b times root c for some numbers a, b, c. Then a, what seems like a reasonable guess of c? Okay, everybody send me answer. What is a re reasonable guess of C? Yes, Andy, you're right. This one should be a 2. C probably will be a 2. Otherwise, how you get the, how you get a root 2 in that expression, right? Then B, if root three root 43 minus 30 uh, times root 2 equals a plus b times root c what can we do to both sides of this equation to get rid of the big picture root sign okay so that means if you guess this c will be root 2 you can do this You can both sides square, right? You can write this one a plus b times root 2. Then you do both sides square. Left side will be 43 minus 30 times root 2. This is the left side. Right side will be a square, then uh, plus. 2 times a b times root 2 then plus 2 b square then we can uh, combine these two terms together we got this one's a square plus 2 b square then this one is as a one term another term that's a term with root 2 so that's 2 times a times b times root 2. So you compare the right side with this left side. So then you can get a square plus 2b square equals 43. Then another it's uh, 2 times a b equals negative 30, right? You can get this equation. So here we have two equations. We have two variables. So now let's simplify. Simplify first. A times B will equals negative 15, right? Then the second equation is A squared plus 2B squared equals 43. See here, A, we can first try AB it's a uh, integer. So then now let's suppose a equals 3, b equals negative 5. Now let's see if this one satisfied here. That would be 9 plus 2 times 25. This one definitely not work. So then we can switch. We can change the a equals uh, negative 5 and uh, b equals 3. We can try this way. So a squared will be 25. b squared, that's 9. 9 times 2, that's uh, 18. Then you got this one equals 43, right? So that means we can get, we got a equals, uh, actually a equals negative 5, b 
equals 3. This one satisfies. Another, you can write a equals uh, positive 5 and b equals negative 3. This one also satisfies the requirement because, say, a times b will equal negative 15. And uh, a squared plus b squared, a squared, that's 25. Whatever a is positive or negative will give you positive 25. Then b squared, whatever b is positive or negative, you have square will equal 9. 9 times 2, that's 18. 25 plus 18, you get a 43. So but then, it always has to be positive. Uh, which one should be positive? You mean that all the numbers should be positive? Yeah. Why? Why? Because the number is positive. They did not require that all the numbers should be positive. They said just from the, num the integers, they did not say that's positive integers. Do they? Okay, so now let's uh, go back check if uh, these two satisfy the requirement, okay? The first one we get, say, we get the uh, first one, it's uh, a is negative 5 plus 3 times root 2. This is the first one we get, right? Then another one we get that's 5 minus 3 times root 2. Right now, let's see if this one satisfy. Uh, all this one satisfy. Yes. See the square root of this. Let's first check this number. This number, you know, root two. It's about one point four, right? So times thirty. That's about forty two. So this one is greater than zero. So then that means square root of this number also should be greater than zero. Okay, but this one, Andy, you're right. This one, it uh, will be less than zero. This one will be less than zero. This one is positive. So that means this one is not satisfied the requirement because this one is less than zero. But the square root of this number should be greater than zero. So then the final, this answer, the answer of this, that's 5 minus 3 times root 2. The negative 5 plus 3 times root 2 is not uh, the solution. 5 minus 3 times root 2 is the solution. But uh, negative 5 plus 3 times root 2 is negative. So it's not a solution. Okay, very good. So, but uh, when we try to solve the equation, we looks like we can get two answers. The one is uh, negative five plus three times root two. Uh, three times root two. Three times root two. Another is uh, five. It can't be negative five plus three. Yeah, this one, later we found that this one is uh, less than zero. This one is greater than zero. But uh, when we check this square root, this one should be a positive number. Then the answer for this problem is only the second one. This one is not right. So the reason for this, because we square the both sides of the equation here. When we say, when we solve this one, we do the both sides square. This one will introduce the fake answer. That's the reason you need to be really careful. When you find your answer, you need to go back check if all these answers are satisfied, the all requirement. So definitely, the, this first one is not satisfied the requirement. Okay, very good. And you're right. Okay, so now say after you found that, say they ask you check your answer by squaring a plus 
B roots C you find. When you find that one is correct, when you square that's correct. But when you check, the answer should be greater than zero. But uh, negative five plus three times root two is negative. So that means. Uh, and that's we're done with the chapter, yay. Yeah, we done this chapter. Uh, now let's see. We have about uh, nine minutes left. Yes, we done this chapter. Then the homework you need to uh, do the exercise problem behind this section. Now let's summary what we learned in this chapter. You know, in this chapter we learned the key point. It's quadratic equation. That's uh, ax squared plus bx plus c. See, the most important knowledge for this uh, quadratic equation, one is a formula. That's negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac square root divided by 2 times a. This is called a quadratic formula. Then here, b squared minus 4ac called discriminant. So that equals b squared minus 4ac. So usually we use the delta to represent discriminant. So here you need to know the three cases. When delta is greater than zero, this equation has two real different real solutions. Two different real solutions. When delta equals zero, you get the two same real solutions. Actually, that's one real solution. Okay, because that two exact same. Then with delta less than zero, this equation has two conjugate conjugate conjugate. Conjugent complex solutions. Complex solutions. Okay. So that here, suppose you have solution one is equals one plus two i. This i, that's a square root of negative one. Then you will know another solution immediately. The other solution will be 1 minus 2 times i. So then uh, we can see some problem. They give you the a quadratic equation has this solution. Then they know you should know the another solution immediately. That's uh, 1 minus 2 times i. Okay. Use this information, you can solve a lot of problems. Okay. This is a most important part we learn. Another is uh, the sum of this quadratic solution will equals negative b over a. Then the products of this solution equals c over a. Okay. This is also very important. We can use it. A lot of times, they ask you from the, like uh, x square, x1 square plus x2 square. Then they don't allow you solve this equation. To do this, you need to just uh, based on their uh, root relationship between the roots and the coefficients. That's actually these two relationships to find the sum of these solutions and the products of these solutions. Then use a, a formula like this. This one equals x1 plus x2. Then square this minus 2 times x1 times x2. Then you can get this. If they ask you to find uh, x1, 1 over, say, 1 over x squared plus 1 over 
x2 square. Actually, you can also do the similar thing. Get a, this one x1 square times x2 square over x1 square plus x2 square. Then you can continue write this one as x1 plus x2 parentheses square minus 2 times x1 times x2 then over x1 square times x2 square. So now suppose I give you an example. If I ask you uh, find uh, suppose this equation 2x square uh, plus 3x uh, minus 7 equals 0. So I don't allow you solve this equation. Then suppose this equation has two solutions, x1 and uh, x2. Then I ask you find uh, 1 over x1 squared plus 1 over x2 squared equals 1. So if you know the relationship between the roots and their coefficients, you can get the sum of these two solutions should equal negative 3 over 2, right? Negative b over a. Then products of these two solutions equals negative 7 over 2. Then you prog to this expression. You can get here. That will be negative 3 over 2 square minus 2 times negative 7 over 2 then over x1 times x2 that's negative 7 over 2 then square you just calculate this so this one you got the 9 over 4 then minus that will change plus because this one minus times minus so you got a 7 right then over 49 over 4 now let's continue simplify the numerator that's 28 plus 9 that's 37 over 4 then switch this one as 49 over uh, 4 over 49 so we got this one it's uh, 4 over 49. So cancel out the common factor. So we get the answer for this one 37 over 49. So this one is correct. Answer. So say by uh, using the relationship of the roots with the coefficients, then we can find uh, the their solutions like the relationship of their solutions 1 over x1 square plus 1 over x2 square but we did not solve this equation right you can if you can solve this equation you can find x1 x2 then you probe to here that's fine but here we did not solve this equation we still can find this answer for this one right so this is what we learn the most important knowledge in this uh, chapter one it's a quadratic formula another it's a relationship between the roots and uh, their coefficients okay so then time's up uh, your homework you also need to finish all the review problems and uh, uh, the challenge problem you can try it we don't uh, force you you did uh, do all these uh, challenge problems so we can stop here uh, everybody bye